In this video, I want to review a piece of software called PDF Studio Viewer. Now, if you found this on YouTube, I'll provide a link below the video where you can look at how to install the software. I'm not going to show how to install it here, but I'll show you a little bit of the features. Now, PDF Studio Viewer is not just for Linux. Even though I'm using Ubuntu Mate 18.04, you can also install this on Windows and Mac. So it's a multi-platform system. And you can actually do a little more than view your PDF files. You can actually uh, annotate and mark up your PDF files. You can highlight. And here's some of the features that you can do with this piece of software. Now, if you're downloading it on an Ubuntu-based uh, distribution or Debian based. If you got a 64-bit system you can download the deb file and if you're using Windows think of this similar to the .exe the executable files where you download and install it or here's the 32-bit bit system for the older 32-bit system uh, systems. When you download the deb file you double go to the file that you've downloaded double click on it and you need to have a GDB installed if not open your terminal and install GDB. When you double click on it you'll come up with the package installer click to install the package you'll be prompted to enter your password and do not close it until you see this same version already installed if you'd like to install it a different way or if you're using a different platform click this link here and it will take you to the download page where you can download it in this case I downloaded for Linux here as you can see it's for Windows Mac and you can even uh, look at the instructions for different ways of installing it on a Linux system other than the way that I've installed it here. Now this is what it looks like the first time you open it. I think I've already unchecked uh, to show this welcome screen on startup but I can show you in just a moment how you can put that back if you like to see all these options because it does have the recent documents that you might like to look at in the left hand side. Here is what it looks like. When you open your document for the first time, you'll see your document in the center and you'll see little thumbnails along the left hand edge. And in this case, I went through and opened up some notes and I showed the individual uh, menus across the top because it is a tabbed or ribbon type menu across the top. Here is where you can download the user guide. You can download the PDF file and keep it like on a thumb drive or keep it on your system. Or if you want to use your online user guide, you just click this button here and it's your user guide. You can go to explaining how to view, getting started with it, annotating, and all the stuff. So I didn't go through and put a lot of information on my web page because it, this does a great job at explaining what this program can do. Now let me minimize my browser. I'm going to go and open the program. It's under Office and I go down to PDF Studio Viewer 2019. Now I can say that this is a, it's a pretty large program so as you can see it takes a little while to open but once it opens it's pretty quick. Now across the top as you can see by default with the newest version, the 2019 version, it has the ribbon type menu. The first tab if you go to is your file tab. It has your properties. Now if I click this, it's, it's not going to show me any properties because I have no open document. Here's your open, save, save as, and these are not highlighted because I can't save anything if it's not open. But you got save, save as, email, close, close all, revert or reload, print, preferences and exit. So right now the open preferences and exit are the only commands that I have available other than I can open it from different locations. Now if I go to preferences, if you don't like this ribbon type, and some people don't, I do, but if you don't like this ribbon type you can go to preferences and there are a lot of preferences you have to choose from. If you don't like the ribbon toolbars, you can go to uh, change it from ribbons to classic style. Then when you hit OK, it's not going to immediately change until you close it and go back and open the program back up. And when you open it again, instead of the ribbon, it's now back to the classic look. It almost looks like the Office 2003 or Office 2007. It doesn't have that ribbon look. If you like the ribbon, you go back to edit, choose preferences. And the reason I'm showing you that is because most people, when you think it since I was originally in file, it's in file, but it's in edit. Go back to your toolbars, go back to ribbon, hit OK. When you close it out and reopen it again, it will be back to your ribbon uh, bar across the top. It, it looks like a tabbed menu. And with this tab menu, it allows you to have a lot of things across the top when you're clicking up here. Now when you're in home, if you look here, this is the hand where like if I had a document open, let me open some documents. I'll open a couple of them. Uh, here is my notes that I created uh, 
back in the days when I taught fifth grade science. And I'll go back and open up a common exam where the state of North Carolina released, and this is a released form, exam for practice students. This was the released form from 2013 that you can use it because the questions are very similar to this day. But notice here, the reason I opened two is even though it's a tabbed menu, it's not tabbed for documents. If you look down here, I still have to click here. Now, if you do want to see the tabbed uh, documents that are open, you can go and view, and you do have the tab documents here, or I can click up here and click down here. But the only difference is you have to go to view, so you're clicking here to switch, whereas it's easy just to click across the bottom if you've got a, a viewable menu across the bottom. So that's one thing that some people may or may not like is you have to go to view if you want to see the tab documents within your menu bar. But in your home menu bar, you've got the hand, so you can click on your document and kind of drag through it to scroll through your pages without using the scroll bar. You can kind of move things around. So if it's larger, you can kind of just move around. Here you can select text where it allows you to select the text to work with. So you got the hand, you got the select text, you got a snapshot. You can take a screenshot of your text or what's in the PDF file within the program. You can hit snapshot and then take a snapshot of an area or whatever and it says the area has been copied to the clipboard. You can save it as a PNG, JPEG, TIFF, or GIF file. I'm just going to cancel this out, but it will take a snapshot of the, whatever that you select on your system. You can search for things. So if you're uh, not sure if this is the right file that you've opened up, you can search for something that you're looking for. Let's say that I want to search for the word motion, and then I hit next. It'll go through this document here, and every word the, every word that it finds that it will locate. So that's very similar to the search feature in other programs like Word and all the other programs that you're used to. You got advanced searches that you can put in a word that you're looking for. You can search within your metadata, the file name, words only case sensitive so that means that it will only match if I write motion with lowercase it won't find the motion with the uppercase. So if I say motion and I say case, oh, I forgot to press my M hard enough. If I say motion and then check case sense. If when I hit search it automatically starts with this motion. It's bypassing this one and unlike the regular search where it goes through and highlights as you press next this shows you all of the occurrences. So if this is it, if this was like a 300 page document I could click here and it immediately go to that location. So that's where the advanced search comes in as a handy tool. Alright you've got your fit to width like if it's not if you got a large document that goes off screen. If you've got a scroll bar here, you can say fit to width and it will place it within the width of your screen. You can say fit to page, which the whole page will be displayed. As you can see here, that's the whole page. You can go to the actual size or you can go and zoom in. Like you can say 100%. You can go like a zoom 150%. You can say like a zoom 100 or 200% or so on and so forth. You've got the zoom feature which is here. Now you also have a zoom feature which is down here on the bottom. Now I've zoomed in here this with the motion of my notes. Here's this one that's zoomed in at 66 percent. So this one looks like it's fit to page whereas this zoomed in is very close. So if you've got something that's hard to see use the zoom feature either here or here. Now here you can change your layout. You, you can see it's a single continuous page which means when I get to the very bottom of this page you see that it's there's a line right here representing where the page ends and the next page begins. You can change that. You can say just a single page. So when you're scrolling through when you get to the end of that page you gotta click the tab over here to go to the next page. I really don't like that feature. I like this one so I can continually flowing through multiple page documents. You also have your facing pages. Uh, that's kind of like when you're in book form where you're laid out side by side. You have your facing continuous pages, you have your cover, and where if you have a cover like a book, it'll show the one page at the top and then the continuous pages side by side and so on and so forth. I'm going to go back to the default single continuous pages. Here this is the feature I like about the PDF Studio Viewer. Now let me let you know here that this is not open source. This is actually a closed source program which means there's a paid version of this but this is the free version and it will do a lot. Like I can say typewriter. If I wanted to put my names on this notes here I can come in here and type my name where I clicked on it. I can type very in this case slowly but up here is my name and if I realize that it's out of the printable area I can go back to the hand and click on that and I can drag it and move it anywhere I want. So when you type you're not really restricted to where you've 
place to that. So that way if I print out the notes, then you see that it will have my name in the upper corner. Now if I'm in a classroom, let's say I'm in high school or middle school or college or whatever, and I'm in school and I want to fill out my notes, and I have a teacher that has the PowerPoints and he has to fill in the notes on his web page, then I can fill this out. I don't have to print it out and take it to the printer. This saves a lot of uh, pages and ink by filling it out and keeping it on a computer. You can actually go back to your typewriter and where it says motion is changing it, so I can come in here and type and I can say position and if that doesn't fit or if it's not in the right place I can kind of drag it to its right place and if the fonts are too large I can click this little button here and I can change my fonts. I can make them larger as you can see that's way too big or I can make them smaller so I think it was 12 if I go back to 10 now my text fits nicely on that line so that way I can fill out my notes as I'm going over in class and when I finish I can save my notes to my computer and that way I don't have to worry about keeping up with pages or type pages or printed pages uh, in a notebook I can open them up on my computer and I can see them on my screen so this is nice if you're like I said if you're in high school or in college where they give you an option to look upon the screen or especially if you're in the, uh, a classroom environment where it's no lab you're just going into a classroom the teachers up at front teaching saying go to my web page open this up and start filling out the notes now if you got important things like if you want to remember a particular goal you can say highlight text and you can highlight that text there and it puts it in it's like using a highlighter so you can go through and highlight the important parts of your notes and if there's something that you know that you're struggling with you can say sticky notes and you can put a little sticky note out to the side and I said like if the teacher said this is going to be on the test you can say important or you can put like an exclamation point and then put like this will be on the test and then you can say and there's a lot of things that you can do here but you can say okay and that way that when you're looking back over your notes if you might remember it that day you're studying but say two or three weeks down the road when you open up your notes you look and say hmm, I wrote a little note over here and you click on that and it says important this will be on the test so you can make yourself little notes on the side as you're filling out your notes now another thing I like about uh, this is its ability let me go back to let me go to this one that has multiple pages because this one only has two pages when I go to this one as you can see here there's multiple pages so when I go to view click on the view tab it's got a reading mode now before I click the reading mode let me tell you something about the reading mode you gotta use the shortcut keys to get out of the reading mode you can't click back on that button going into reading mode you can click on the button but if you hover over it, it says reading mode control H control H is your escape way of getting out of reading mode you know when I first started using this I thought I can't stand this because I don't know how to get out of the reading mode then I got to using the user guide and it had shortcuts and it said that you get out of the reading mode you need to press and hold down control and press the H key so I'm reminding you that before I click on the reading mode so when I click reading mode as you can see here it makes it where it's almost full screen there is a small bar at the top so you can see the name of the file and there is your normal bars that would be within your operating system but if you look down here you've got your uh, single page Page, your kind of continuous page that we had when I showed you the views you can put side by side now when I had it up earlier in the view that we were looking at you couldn't see the side by side so if I click on side by side you really don't see the uh, it, there you do you see this the next page if you got a large monitor now like if you got a small monitor or a, like a laptop with a small monitor if you click that one it's probably still going to show you one page it may show you two pages but you probably have to zoom in and scroll around and that would kind of defeat the purpose of making it look like a book so uh, use what fits best to your system so look here you got the little page buttons that you can flip like flipping pages within a book and you can flip back like flipping back in a book so getting out of this mode here remember control H that gets you back into your normal mode so using your home button as you can see here there's a, a, a view section very similar to the view section here there's a lot of features within the view tab but your home you got a lot of the common features that you use in the view tab the same thing with the comments you've got a little comment section here 
that's similar to the comments here but you've got more features when you click on the comment tab and when you click on the help tab there's a lot of information here there's the link to the user guide you can give feedback you can check for updates by clicking on that this allows you to edit your PDF you're very limited on what you can with the free version but it does do a lot let me go back to where it says home and let me go back to where it's uh, your typewriter let's say that I want to put my name here if I'm going to answer this right here on this form and I'm not going to go through and answer every question I'm just going to show you how you can use this for doing your assignments that your teacher may post on the internet now if I look here and even if I put it in the center that text is very small so if you look here it doesn't kind of match this is where you can click on this to where you can change your font so in this case 12 is going to be too small a while ago it was too large so I can increase it like to 18 and that looks pretty good or I can even increase it a little bit more and I can even bold it I can italicize underline and have other features of that so I can say okay and that way it looks bold here on that form now if I wanted to go through and start answering these I can hit my text and I can say like a I'm not reading these I'm just going through and selecting them let's say that was D let's say that one right here is a so that way as you can see here that's a quick way of answering those is by highlighting the answer and I can simply go through each one of these and do the same thing so I can answer them. when I get finished with it I can hit the save button now hitting the save button will overwrite the existing name so if you want to keep the form where you can practice later and not have any answers on it then don't hit the save button hit the save as button and it will prompt you with a dialog box allowing you to give this file a new name so that's how you can annotate or highlight the text files now uh, I showed you the sticky note while I go let's say that you've got some notes that has let me go back to my notes let's say they got some notes and you want to point out something let's say that you're looking here and you want to point something out on this graph or you want to point something out in your notes you can actually go to where it says comments and you've got all kind of things like you can make circles square boxes like if I wanted to put a circle on this graph there's a circle you can put different shapes you can put squares and put information within your square you can put a highlighted square and there it is so if you want to make a sticky note that's viewable you can write the text in the highlighted uh, box you can use arrows like if you want to point out where something's changing significantly you can say this is the starting point make yourself some little notes out to the side or if you just want to handwrite you can click on the pencil click in the area and you can start to handwrite like if I can say this and that looks terrible you know if you've got like a touch screen with a uh, you know a pen that you're writing on your screen then that would be a lot better that looks terrible I'm going to undo that but it does have a free hand pencil where you can freehand on your document so there's lots of things that you have that you can do with this document you know I showed you the sticky notes you can make your uh, text box as I showed you earlier where you can type inside the text box so I know I didn't show you all the features but I showed you a lot of the important features that PDF studio has and this is the version when you go here and, and look at it if you say help well you can go here file preferences and again it goes through and you can go through each of these where you say run in the background your trusted certificates your toolbars now a while ago I showed you how you can change your fonts if you want to choose a default font you can come here and select a font in here and hit OK and that will make it your default font right now it's the font that it says for the system when you install this so hopefully this has helped you understand how to use the basic features of PDF Studio Viewer again this is not open source so if you're someone in the Linux community that don't like using uh, anything other than open source you may want to stay away from this but if you're coming from the Windows environment and you're not used to using just total open source this is a great viewer now I can say before I wrap this video up it is very large so if you have an old 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 system it may be slow or slower than what you're used to but if you got yourself like a newer system as you can see here I click it doesn't take very long to open but when you first open the application it takes a little bit longer to load because it is a larger program than your default PDF viewer that's normally installed on your system hopefully this has helped you and have a great day